Sorry, I'm a touch late. I was trying to uh, adjust the, uh, the camera angle to get the light better, because just with where we're at in the sun, because it's rising earlier, it's hitting the window over there and like sending this giant massive amount of backlight that does weird things to the lighting. <sighs> I never thought I'd have to worry about camera, camera lighting. Good morning, good morning. Today is March 4th. If you are from Minden, Nebraska, you may know this is Mike Simp Day, at least if you're of my age. Uh, the day that we celebrate marching bands, because it's the day that is command, March 4th. If I was properly observing, I'd be wearing a bow tie and waxing poetically about trombones, but I'm only part way in. Uh, today we're going to get uh, Genesis 24. Yes, we skipped Genesis 23. I'm not going to grouse about it. <laughs> and, um... I've learned to accept it. And then we're also going to look at um, the text that we just heard this past Sunday in our reading, but Mark's version of it. So, uh, and then we'll look at the second petition of the Lord's Prayer. So now that we know where we're going, <clears throat> let's dive on it. Page 295. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalmody for today is Psalm 28, verses 6 through 9. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield, in him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to him. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. O oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is Genesis 24, and just to look very quickly so I can have my own bearings set up. Um, Genesis 23, yeah. Genesis 23 is Sarah's death, so it gives the, the tale of the death of Sarah. And we move on now to Genesis 24. Now, Abraham was old, well advanced in years. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his household, who had charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh, that I may make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanite, among whom I dwell, but will go to my country and to my kindred and take a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, Perhaps the woman may not be willing to follow me back to this land. Must I then take your son back to the land from which you came? Abraham said to him, See to it that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and who spoke to me and swore to me, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife from my son from there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free from this oath of mine. Only you must not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, taking all sorts of choice gifts from his master. And he went and arose and went to Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia to the city of Nahor. And he made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water at the time of evening, <clears throat> uh, when, uh, the time when women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today, and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Let the young woman to whom I shall say, Please let down your jar that I may drink, and who shall say, Drink, and I will water your camels. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have shown steadfast love to my master. 
Before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcal, wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her water jar on her shoulder. The young woman was very attractive in appearance, a maiden whom no man had known. She went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please give me a little water to drink from your jar. She said, Drink, my lord. She quickly let down her jar upon her hand and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also, until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran again to the well to draw water, and she drew for all the camels. The man gazed at her in silence to learn whether the Lord had prospered his journey or not. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring, weighing a half shekel, and two bracelets for her arms, weighing ten gold shekels, and said, Please, tell me whose daughter you are. Is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She said to him, I'm the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. She added, We have plenty of both straw and fodder and room to spend the night. And the man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord and said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his steadfast love and his faithfulness towards my master. As for me, the Lord has led me the way to the house of my master's kinsman. Then the young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. Rebekah had a brother whose name was Laban. Laban ran out to the man to the spring. As soon as he saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's arm and heard the words of Rebekah's sister, thus the man spoke to me and went to the man, and behold, he was standing by the camels at the spring. He said, Come in, O blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For I prepared the house and a place for the camels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll get the rest of the story next time. But remember, we, we got this earlier on. Abraham's father starts to head on out, and he dies. And then uh, Abraham's kin uh, stay, because the one wife dies at Nahor, and they, he builds a town after her. So basically what happens is uh, the servant finds the, the kin, and note something. Laban recognizes who the Lord is. They, they, they're all part and parcel. They're, they're family. They're cousins. They know of the Lord. And they know that Abraham's got the full mission. He needs to go out. They're not the ones that need to go on out to the promised land. They're not going to be the, the ones directly from whom the Messiah will come. So they stayed where they were at and settled down. I'm like, okay, this is a nice place. And the servant finds one of them. And so basically, it's, he's finding a, a gal who has some knowledge of the Lord, which is a, an awesome thing. So, And it's just kind of neat how this all sets on up. And, and it's definitely not the way that we do marriages today. And this is one where, where uh, we, we look at this and go, this is just horrible. We're, we're totally not used to the idea of arranged marriages at all. Just utterly foreign to us. And yet there's actually more consideration here. Well, what if she doesn't want to come out this way? Well, then you don't get someone else. But you're not taking my son back here because he needs to stay in the promised land because he is the son of promise. He needs to be in the promised land. Uh, wasn't uncommon to where, no, it doesn't matter whether or not they want to go. You take them anyway. Uh, welcome to the joys of a raiding culture. But, but it's me, because it's like, oh, and, and what do we see in Rebecca? What, why would the servant say, you know, let her offer to water the camels, too? It means she's kind. It means she, she takes initiative on loving the neighbor. Well, that's kind of a good characteristic that one might want in a spouse. It's not like you can go, all right, let her come up and grumble about where I parked my camels. You're in my spot, chief. Ah, there's the gal for my master's son. No, it, it, it's, yeah. Show, show me a nice gal that I, I can find someone for her. And this is the way that it happened. So, different than today. Alas, my father had no servant to, to, to send off to find a spouse for me. So I had to wait and wait till I was almost 30 to get hitched. Alas, my father has no servant. All right, our, uh, our, uh, 
Our New Testament reading is going to be from Mark chapter 7. Uh, this is verses 24 through 37. From there, Jesus arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs, eat, uh, dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephetha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, and his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus char charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed him. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the word of the Lord. So, one of the things that comes up with, with these two texts is we actually, I, I get to preach on each of these every year. Now, I do the Mark 7 text. Oh, is it like Trinity 8, Trinity 9, Trinity 10? It, it, it's normally right around that August time frame where this uh where the second half of the reading comes up and then the the matthew's version of the the canaanite woman the syrophoenician woman uh comes up in uh, last week in lent uh one of the things that's note looking at at mark's accounting here is she he notes that jesus is in a house and so this is one of the reasons why why that that setup of Jesus just letting the apostles try and take the lead and, you know, you should be getting her out. She broke into a house, basically. She's come in, I mean, it's not like they're just on the open road and like, okay, go, go, go ferry her off. It's, no, she's in a house. And if someone comes into your house and starts pestering people, it's not uncommon to say, yeah, you need to go. So again, the fact that, that, that uh, Matthew records the disciples being all flustered is like, yeah. But Mark skips that lesson. Yeah, you know, Peter doesn't necessarily need to emphasize that point, that aspect. But he, he gets that, that point where the gospel is spread. And, and even the Gentiles hear it. And, and Jesus says, you know what? Let the, let the children be fed first. Right? Sh shouldn't I be dealing with Israel? Yeah, but she's got enough to take care of me too. Yep, you're right. The dogs eat the crumbs. We all get fed. You're right. Your kid is healed. And then they come across another person who's, well, not what you'd want to have healed. He, he's a deaf and mute uh, Gentile. And yet, what does Jesus do? Just, nope, straight up, going to heal him. This is one of my favorite texts. I... I I will share a memory from this text. So now, I'm wondering if this isn't where we started last year when the pandemic started. I'm going to have to check because we, we started on a, a Thursday. <laughs> so I think it might have been this one. Um, when I was in seminary, my family would do a hog roast out in uh, Ohio at one of the farms. And all my grandma, my grandma and her siblings would get together and the kids would come down and, and it would be over the weekend and, and normally they would just have a little devotional service out at the farm. And since I was in the seminary, they're like, all right, Eric, you do it. Okay. And uh, it was the, the weekend for this text and I read it. And my, my family's all Lutheran. <coughs> Lutheran. Um, and, and I, I read this, and I did a little sermon, and, and I pointed, this is one of the things that we're going to see. I mean, I know a lot of you, 
I, I hadn't seen many of you in 10 years, and some of you can't see me as well as you could 10 years ago, and some of you can't hear me as well as you could could have 10 years ago. I, I, we see the effects of age, and this is the promise that we have, that, that our own bodies will be healed, that, that we will be raised to new life, and when we are in the resurrection, we will have our bodies, and we will have ears that work, we will have mouths that work, mouths that work, uh, we'll have eyes that work and such. And, and one of my aunts, my dad's aunt, technically, came out, you know, I never really thought about that. And, and I, it was very, one of those things that struck me, it's like, I know you have confessed the Apostles' Creed, and I look forward to the resurrection of the body. Thousands of times, literally thousands of times in your life, and, and you hadn't thought of that. And, and it is one of the things where we tend to spiritualize God. Where we're where dealing with God as spiritual things up there. Ooh, look up in the clouds. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and, and earth. That, that God has made us to be body and soul joined and knit together. And that our bodies are good things from God. And we see the impact of sin upon our bodies. We see the impact of, of sin, of age, of death. And part of what Christ has come to do is to defeat that, destroy that, defoy that. There will come a time when we speak rightly. And, and, and this is the, the joy that we look for. This is, this is Job. I know that my Redeemer lives, and yet when my own, after my own flesh has been destroyed, I will see him myself, my own eyes. Not another. My heart melts within me. And, and what you see here in these two healings are, are just how widespread this gift is. It's not just that God's going to take care of just a few people. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that promise is for you, and that is a fantastic, fantastic promise. You, all the more important whenever you see the, uh, the ravages of sin and the impact of sin upon you. Christ Jesus has come to fix it. So, thus we'll, oh, this works really well. We'll dovetail into our, our catechism lesson today, the second petition of the Lord's Prayer. What is the second petition of the Lord's Prayer? Thy kingdom come. What does this mean? The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer. But we pray that it, in this petition that it may come to us also. How does God's kingdom come? God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us his Holy Spirit, so that by his grace we believe in his Holy Word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity. When we talk about the kingdom of God, it, it's not primarily power. I mean, yes, we, we do understand that all the kingdoms of the world run under the, the authority of God, that no one is alive, no one leads without God permitting it. Um, this is why we pray for our government, because, yes, God has so seen it that they are in authority and has not hindered them, and rather has put them in position, <clears throat> either to serve us or to humble us, either way. But when we speak of God's kingdom, we're speaking first and foremost of the, the kingdom of, of grace, of mercy, of, of restoration. We're speaking of the power of the gospel. And I like how, how Luther describes it. Oh, I'm so, I'm so glad that you like the small catechism, Pastor. That's so charitable of you. But I really like what Luther does here. When, when God sends the Holy Spirit... I believe I cannot believe by my own reason or strength, but the Holy Spirit has called me. Well, the kingdom of God is when God says, all right, Holy Spirit, you go call that person. You have them baptized. You bring them into my family. Why? To what end? That by his grace, we believe his word. And that believing his word, we live holy lives. Here now, but also in eternity. The, the kingdom of God is God making you a Christian. God making you to see Jesus, making you to hear Jesus, making you to believe Jesus. That's something that God does. That's his kingdom at work upon you. The kingdom. Um, 
a note for coming up this weekend. But if it is by uh, the finger of God that I cast out demons, Jesus says, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. We're going to get a little bit of this on, on this weekend. And God's kingdom comes. Not because we control it, but because that's what God does. He's determined to rescue. He's determined to be your redeemer. And he is going to see you raised. For he is going to see you forgiven and raised from the dead. Because that's what Jesus does. All right. I think that will work. So it is a Tuesday. Or no, it's a Thursday. It's been a long week. It's going to get longer until they get to take my, my son Amber to send to the dentist to, to get a cavity taken care of. Because my wife has a meeting. So I have to be the... I have to go to the dentist with him, and I'm a weenie dad. I don't take my dad to the. I don't take my kids to the, the doctor stuff. I, I leave that to the nurse. That's why I married a nurse. I get to do it today. Oh, well, nice. Oh. So <laughs> let's do the let's do responsive prayer, and then I will get ready to go on my way and be medical dad, like my father before me. I punt that to the wife that I married, who's a nurse, normally. <clears throat> <laughs> Let us do the uh, suffrages. Holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I cry to you, O Lord. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me bless his holy name. He redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with us this day. Be with us in the face of all the various trials and troubles that we come across, all the various opportunities you provide to us to care for our neighbor. Give us your strength, your wisdom. Make your Holy Spirit bring forth in us the fruit of faith, that we might uh, be prepared to be good and willing servants to others, providing them what they need. Heavenly Father, be with those who are sick, those who are ill, those who are recovering. Be with those who are waiting patiently for, for medication and treatments that they need. Grant that you would send forth healing upon people. Be with those who are working to serve those who are ill. Grant them strength and endurance. And be with them and give them uh, courage and, and endurance as they go about their tasks. These things and whatever else you know that we need, we lift up to you, trusting the great love you have for us in your Son, Christ Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Prayer of the day. O Lord, let your merciful ears be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and grant that what they ask may be in accord with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. More on God's gracious will tomorrow. In our catechism lesson. The concluding prayers. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. 
that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me for this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. All right, everyone. Have a great one. And uh, I will see you when I get to see you. The Lord be with you. Bye. Thank you.